the most anticipated video I have ever done. And it's all because of you guys. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today, it's all about the pros and cons, the goods, the bads, whatever you want to call it. We're doing the showdown, we're doing the throwdown, and it all starts now. All right, let's get some stuff out of the way first. I would like to first and foremost mention that the Pit Boss Griddle was given to me for free. It will by no means, not today, not in the past, and not ever change my opinion or my mind based on what I see is value or cons, pros versus cons, ever. With that being said, this video is going to begin. You guys have asked for it. I've tried my best to come up with the things that I think that are important. My things might be different than your things. But ultimately, I think we can all come together and say, we've got a good one for you. You guys ready? All right. First things first, because I get it from a lot of people. I do not think it's important, but you guys do. So that's why I'm doing it today. We're going to see how big it is. Easy. Easy. Before we get to the pros and cons, I'm just going over the quick measurements because I don't know if it's a pro or con. It depends on what model you have, how big it is, how many burners, so on and so forth, right? I've been in the Kemp Chef, or it's been in the family the longest, so I'm just going to start with it quickly, okay? Let's just roughly say 21 inches because that's really not going to matter. What really matters is it's 19 inches to the, to the beginning of the grease trough, okay? So 19 inches by 31 and a half inches, okay? That's the four burner. Over on the Pit Boss, it's pretty similar. 18 and a half by 30 inches, okay? So although this is just a three burner, it's very comparable to the four burner Camp Chef. Uh, we'll run right over here. The Blackstone is the biggest of all of them. Let's just roughly say 22 inches and the width is three feet exactly, okay? The reason why that's important when you guys say, should I go to the three burner or four burner? I mean, I just showed you the difference of the pit boss and the, if you just take the difference between the three burner and the four burner, that's a big difference. So if that's gonna be a personal preference on your family needs. Really quick before we move on, cause somebody's mentioned it before. I'll try to cover all the bases today. Height, roughly 37 and a half inches without the lid. This comes with the lid. So I'd probably say maybe 41 and a half inches with lid. We did take the lid off just for filming purposes, it, but it has a hood. Yes, that's what I meant. Three feet. And then this is what? 35. Basically 35, and if you close the hood, then what is that, three feet? So that just gives you a rough well, idea. 38. Okay, well that gives you a rough idea. Now's the fun part, pros versus cons. It's everything that I've learned in the last two and a half years of griddling, we're gonna go from the wheels all the way to the hoods. Number one, the wheels, all right? <clears throat> the Pit Boss has these bad old wheels on the bottom and these little caster wheels right here. The Camp Chef, of course, has leveling right here. You can level your griddle uh, one way while here, we can get back to the other way in a minute. That's just a big old wheel. And then right here, we got caster wheels on all four. So if you're looking at pros and cons, I am completely different than most of you. I move my griddles all the time, one for space and two for filming. If you have a system set up to where you have to move your griddle all the time, this might be important. I never knew there was a difference because I never had a different griddle. Once I got the Pit Boss, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because it had the four set, the, the two different sets of wheels and it was easier to move. But then I got the Blackstone and these things spin 360 degrees, all of them. And this is so much easier to move. That's a preference. Wheels, is that important? How much do you move it? Number two on the list, shelves. We're gonna go from the bottom shelves to the side shelves. As you can tell with the air fryer combo, you only have the bottom shelf here, right? I typically haven't found myself leaning towards the very bottom to put something down. Besides giving it structure and maybe a toolbox or something, I don't see it being a very 
um, user-friendly shelf on the bottom of the Blackstone. As far as the side shelves go, you guys can see that they've cut it out here. I'm sure that's because there's so much heat that comes out. It kind of protects you from putting stuff up to the side. With that being said, stuff still gets extremely hot. I've mentioned it before, the Camp Chef is set up the same exact way. I will say this, if you're looking on the market and you get these little handles that come with them, they're only attached by one little screw. When you're moving your deck to reiterate about how easy it is to move something, these handles are known or prone to break really easy because they're not made to move the griddle. I actually use a shelf as a base to move the griddle, not the handle. They're just like a towel rack or a rag or, or to hang a rag or something. They're not for the weight of the griddle. The shelf gets extremely hot. Um, and on this one, you have to keep it up to keep the grease trap in it. Okay. You see that? Now, with the other two shelves, I found it to be a lot more useful. I don't use the bottom shelf as much as the second shelf, but I do find myself using the second shelf, the second shelf a ton, way more than what I ever thought I would. But the second shelf, I'll put it like an empty plate down there. You guys see me film all the time. Um, it holds a lot of stuff. It does kind of get warm. I would not say hot, but it does get warm through the overall heat. Uh, about the pit boss. Oh, I, I would mention, oh, we got bees and Ooh. pollen and everything else today. All right, about, um, all three uh, sets of these griddles, the shelves, oh, get away from me. The shelves uh, come down, right, to make storage a little bit easier. Um, I will say this about the pit boss. Although the shelves are lower, you see the difference in the height? When you put a water bottle, let's say this is, you know, a water bottle here, the water bottle can still get hot. The shelf might not get as hot, but your water bottle or your oil bottle or anything like that can still get hot on it. Um, also too, let me move around here, make some room. I have found that this flat out just gets in the way. There's no other way to put it. You would normally just uh, haphazardly take something and put it like right there on the shelf, but you can't. I mean, it just blocks your way. I understand it's for sturdiness, but to me, I wish this was not here. Number three, since we're working from the ground up, we're going to mention the propane tank system, okay? The Pit Boss, I know it's extremely hard to tell, has a, like a, not spring-loaded, but a piece of metal that comes down or up. It just naturally flows. And then the bottom of it fits on this little hook down there. Since I've moved my griddles often, and this piece of metal here is not 100%, see that right there? I don't know if you can see that on the video, I hope you can. If I hit a bump in my deck or anything like that, my propane tank has fallen off several times. I've learned how to move it, God, knock on wood, without it falling, but it's it's too loose. It's too flimsy to be moving it all the time. But it, come, it does come with a cool cover. Now listen, that's not gonna sway you one way or the other. Um, you know, I'm sure there's other covers out there like propane tank covers, but it came with the box and I think it's pretty neat. It does keep the dirt off the propane tank. I've got another one. Show them that one right there. That's, that's from my dad's house. So you can see how the cover might help you, you know, look a little professional on the side. I don't know. I don't, that, that dirtiness, I don't like it. All right, on the Camp Chef, it's pretty locked in. It actually sits down in a hook. I've never had it, as much as I move it, that thing's solid as can be. Um, it sits in a hook and it sits on a hook down here. As for the uh, the Blackstone, it's almost like the, the cross between both. It's very, very, very sturdy. I have not had it fall off. Um, it sits in a hook is what, what I like. But the bottom is almost just like a resting place for this, the top of the tank, not the very bottom tank to sit on. So there is a little bit of differences back and forth. These have not fallen off at all and I move them all the time. Number four, when talking about uh, from the ground up, I'm not gonna mention much about the air fryer because I don't feel like it's fair to compare the air fryer since these two other ones don't have it. I haven't used it a ton, so I'm not very knowledgeable about it at this point. I have not used it as much as I thought it would. We've talked about that on eight things to consider before you buy a flat top grill. 
So let's talk about the ignition system. Uh, the Blackstone, you would turn each eye on, right? Just for a quick example, and you would press the ignition button. The ignition button is battery operated, okay? When you're done using it, just press the knobs in, and there you go. So it's not, you know, that big of a deal. Um, the Camp Chef, each individual one is ignition driven. What do I mean by that? There's no button to push. It's like turning an eye on on your stove. Right? So that one's on. You kind of hear that click. Same way. And when you're done, you would just turn them off. So now we got the pit boss here. The pit boss is set up just like the Blackstone where it's got, you turn your burners on and you would press that ignition and it would light your burners for you. When you open this up, if you're worried about, I, I, I hear a lot of people a lot of times saying, well, my, I don't know if my camp chef's on um, because it's not a visual. I'm going to show you. The pit boss has a big enough gap to where you can look inside of it and see if your burners are on. The camp chef doesn't necessarily have that option, but you can look through these peak holes and see the same thing. It's just a little bit harder to look for. And then obviously on the black stone, you can see over through here, if they're all four on through this gap right here, if that's a necessary need for you, you can tell pretty quickly once you use them often, if they're on. Since we're talking about ignition, the these are straight eyes. I wonder if I can take it straight up. These are straight burners, just four straight burners. The Camp Chef also has four straight burners. And then although this is a three burner griddle, it actually has a D or a P, however you want to call it. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a four burner system, but since it goes up here, they've allowed the heat distribution to be a little bit wider, but it carries the same BTUs on this side as it would as a single burner. So we'll get to heat distribution in a minute, but that's why it allows you to get a little bit more heat on this side um, surface wise than it does for the two straight ones. So just cause it's a three burner, don't think that this doesn't have any heat over there. Speaking of heat distribution, we're going to number five. There's almost like a pro and con in everything I say from here, just on this one idea. I have found that the Blackstone has probably the largest heat distribution uh, offsetting temperatures and like, hot spots and cold spots than any griddle I have. So the largest like variance in temperatures Yes, across it, the griddle surface. Yes, and if you can see right here, I'm gonna show you, this is like kind of, this tells you why in a little bit. You see how non-bronzed color that is? I don't know if you can see that. That's because even on like a, a good medium, when this thing's cranking like 450 on the middle, these corners are only reaching about maybe 250 to 300. Even down here, all along this edge, all around it up, you see how that bronzing naturally turns over? I know this will brown or turn dark over a period of time, but it just goes to show you through normal cooks that there's a lot of heat displacement or misplacement. Variance. Yes, and right through here, if you look at how to season a brand new black stone griddle, I was shocked because I had seen it in other videos, but I didn't correlate the two together. The first thing you do when you get your griddle, no matter if you sand it, wash it, whatever, is turn the griddle on. And you'll notice right away that the hot spot starts building about right through here. Well, that's true when you turn it on. Um, even if you have all four burners on low, there is a hot spot right through here. And then I'm assuming this metal will pick up the temperature, even though the burners run this way, that your sweet spot is only about this far would be my guess. So you can see how much grill. Now this will get hot, but it's not as hot. So although this is a bit bigger griddle surface, your sweet spot only runs like this. Make sense? Are you on board with that? Did I explain it well? Yes. Okay. If I only had this griddle only, 
you might not even notice it because you have nothing to compare it to. That's what this video is about, pros and cons. So with that being said, is that a con for you? It's not a con for me, but it's definitely not a pro. Does that make sense? Like it, You're kind of indifferent. Exactly. It's just something to be aware of. Yes. Okay. As far as the Camp Chef, it actually comes with a heat diffuser plate on the bottom. And they've done that. That's just my grill grate. They've done that because... One, it makes, I think, the flat top heavier. It holds heat better. And two, I think it displaces the heat. Now you've got that heat plate that allows the flames to come up with holes in it, right? And then the heat plate absorbs the heat, which allows your flat top to heat more evenly. And since the heat plate, in, in my opinion, is hot from the flames, it allows your flat top grill to recuperate the heat that it's lost during a cook uh, faster. Um, there is less variance of heat distribution on this than any griddle I have. The one fault though is the fact that my grease trough will stay, I wouldn't say rusty, but it just doesn't get hot enough because the heat isn't there. So you have to pay very, very, very close attention to your rust building up on your grease trough. It just does not get hot enough to burn that oil to create that patina to stop the rust. So it doesn't, it's hard to season the grease trough. Trough is what you're saying. Yeah, and funny thing is, is since all your grease comes down, you think it'd be easy because the grease is hot coming down, but it just doesn't have that constant heat to be able to burn that grease off. All right, that's a lot of talking about that one. All right, for the heat displacement here, it too has a switch me places. Okay. It too is not as good as it could be. Um, with that one D ring, right? They're taking the same amount of BTUs, but they're spreading it out over a larger surface. Okay, so you're not getting that hot spot. Now this is where the pros and cons come into play. So I find that this area right through here shoots at a lower temperature on a consistent basis. With that being said, I've always said, the bigger the griddle, the better opportunity you have to be able to move food off the heat uh, via like a, the cooling rack or like a resting place to allow to cool. So that's actually not a bad thing, but it just goes to show you that the heat's not consistent all the way around. And I have noticed in the hash brown video, right through here is a cold spot. You guys, I put like one, two, one, two, these got extremely dark and these got extremely light. Um, and you can see even here, you, I don't know if you can see that. See how smooth that is? There's not a lot of heat up there either. This right here is a natural area to where you, you want to cook. And you can see how the grease is starting to build up. I need to do a deep clean again. But you can see how the grease is building up because this is like your power alley. This is like the sweet spot on the back. You can hit a baseball on any part of the back. But when you hit it on a sweet spot with a right swing, boom, another story. But you, can, you see what I'm talking about? The heat distribution on this is, is still not as well as what it could be. There are cool spots. It's about how you move the food to be able to get to the hot spots and the cool spots. So that's a pro and con. Do you like the idea of something maybe being 425 here and maybe 375 there? The next pro and con is, and I, I personally think is a hot topic, uh, is the grease trap. I've said it since day one. I like to pull my grease towards me. I like the Camp Chef system 100%. I have no problems with the grease trap being small. I love the grease trough. I love the fact that all the food can come off and you're really not losing any surface area from here to here. There's not a hole there. There's not a hole here, so on and so forth. I've mentioned it in multiple videos. People have said that they cannot stand the idea of pulling grease towards them because they're scared they're gonna get burned or that just seems like it's the dumbest idea ever. The grease trap here is in the back. And one thing my wife mentioned, kudos to her, is when you store your Blackstone, if you store it against a wall, you might have to keep pulling it and pushing it to get to the grease trap to, to fill it or not fill it. Also, with that being said, when the hood is on this, if you only keep the hood on it and don't have an exterior cover, I have zero exterior covers because I've got a pretty expanded large metal deck. Um, I have no soft covers. But 
if you just keep the hood over this and it rains and this isn't protected, then it fills up with water. So that could be a con for some people. On the pit boss, I found absolutely no issue. I mean, I kind of wish that the grease trap was not on the plate, but you're talking about, it's not even apples or oranges. Like it doesn't bother me. I've used it. I actually kind of like it, the idea of the hole being a bigger because I can understand what people say about um, food not going down the grease trap. Well, this is a little bit bigger, so it allowed you to put paper towels or eggshell or, you know, bits from rice or something like that. But honestly, as much as I cook on them, I mean, I, the grease trap is exact, it's designed to do exactly what it does. It holds food debris and all that. She wanted me to reiterate. Some people mentioned how bad the grease trap is on the Camp Chef because the hole for the grease is so small. Because I want to reiterate that it's a grease trap, not a food trap. I like to pull grease down. Okay, this is how I clean my griddle, just like this. When I say that you need a bigger griddle versus a smaller griddle because you can move food over and then clean as you go, let's say this is chicken hibachi, whatever, right? Move the food over, then all of a sudden you start cleaning your grill as you go, and look, it's just natural. If everything funnels into here, if I had food debris, I would just take it up, move the debris up, and then take my bench scraper here, use the lip, come right up, right in there. Now, I know you're thinking, well, that's stupid if you had a bigger hole. It's just natural that, I mean, it's not a big deal to me. When you look at the Blackstone, it's got the bigger hole for you, right? So that might be important to you. But I don't like the idea of pushing grease away. I don't know why. I, I don't, it just feels unnatural. It's almost like if I started cooking left-handed, I couldn't do it. I, I deal with it when I cook on it, and it doesn't seem like, it's the end all and be all, but I mean, if you're gonna create the world's greatest griddle, if I was building it from the ground up, I would put the grease trap in the front. Definitely a big pro and con. This is probably the breaking point for a lot of people. You can see through all the comments, whether it's on the Pit Boss Griddle Group, our community page on Facebook, whether it's Camp Chef Griddle Owners, or whether it's on ours. We have one called the Griddle Group. I don't care what griddle you cook on, I don't care if you even have a griddle. Matter of fact, all I love is the fact that people share the recipes, their ideas, their support, um, and everything about the griddle community is what I'm all about. So if you guys want to join, you can look it up at The Griddle Group on Facebook and see what the hype is all about. There's been a lot of controversy on utensils, on what griddle, to, what griddle and can you use metal utensils on the Pit Boss Ultimate ceramic coated surface. Obviously we know that you can use metal on the rolled steel, okay? The Pit Boss manual specifically states wood, silicone, or some other apparatus to be able to cook on the surface to extend the life of the surface. Some people said they use metal utensils. There's other people out there that swear up and down that absolute no way you could ever use metal utensils on a ceramic coated surface. I think if you do use metal, you have to do it at your own risk. The reason why I say that is because the way I use metal on my flat top grill could be the difference between you use metal on yours. I would never use a bench scraper on a ceramic coated surface. I wouldn't take chopped cheese. I wouldn't take a Philly steak and cheese or um, what's another one? Anything like that and start bearing down on the, on the, on the uh, ceramic coated surface and trying to scratch it up. I personally, only personally, do not have a problem use a metal use spatula on my griddle. I'm gonna see how long it lasts, what happens to it when you use metal, so on and so forth. This is my personal preference only. Um, but can you mention, let's see your spatula. It doesn't have any beveled edge. It doesn't have any sharp edge. You know, Amy made up a really good point that we never even thought of until this right second. This is a pit boss spatula. And the reason why I bring it out is because you can see how the edges are beveled and they're sharpened, right? I could understand how this would be used for a certain yeah, that's, specific that's need. A sharp edge. Right? The reason why I say I love the spatula the most, it's flexible, it's lightweight, it's got rounded edges, and it's thin all the way across. I don't ever push my food like this. I'll use the flat surface like this, right? Point is, is this could do a lot more damage than this. If you do not feel comfortable using metal, then don't use metal. Matter of fact, we use wood all the time and it's done everything that we've ever asked it to do. It gets the fond up, which is the food that's stuck to the griddle. Um, 
when we clean the griddle, we use wood. We use um, silicone spatulas today. Pit Boss literally just came out with their set of silicone spatulas. Uh, it's a five-piece set or a two-piece set, depending on which one you get, for the Ultimate Griddle Series. One of the hot button topics on a pro and con that I see a lot of people talking about, I'm talking about warping. People swear up and down that they don't like Camp Chef because the griddle warps. And there are nightmare issues out there. When you look at Blackstone, there's equally amount of warping goes on on Blackstone than there are at Camp Chef. We have our own speculation, our own reasons how it happens. We get feedback that people say, I swear I didn't use on a high, I swear I didn't use frozen fruits. It came out of the package, warped. You know, there's a, a, a plethora, of abundance of reasons why griddles warp. I can't tell you that one brand is far superior on the other or over the other based on warping issues. I don't know if it's just based on um, material at the time. I don't know if it's based on operator error. I don't know if it's based on luck or skill. Warping has happened in all three brands. I don't know the answer to fix it all, and I don't know the answer to help you all. Um, when I say that, I don't know how to stop the warping, and I don't know how, once it happens, how to fix it. It's just out there. It's got to be addressed. It's not one brand versus the other. They've all three warped. We're getting to the end of it, guys. Just bear with me. You guys wanted the video. There's a lot to talk about, so thank you for bearing with me. When you're talking about the rolled metal, the rolled steel, Technically, these things can outlive you. The actual griddle top is going to outlive anything probably on the whole base, as you can imagine. Uh, whether you re-season it, you can take it down to bare metal, you can leave it outdoor. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Not many things you can't do with it, as long as you know how to season it correctly. Uh, metal utensils, fine. Wooden, nylon, I mean not nylon, uh, silicone, they all work. You can be aggressive on the flat top as long as you know how to take care of it. I've even said during one of my videos about using the bench scraper. You gotta be careful because you can ruin your seasoning on a flat top grill. The difference is you can bring it back to life versus on the ceramic coated. Once you've damaged that surface, you might not be able to. When we're speaking of how long these things to last, we're gonna talk about the pit boss real quick about longevity. There's it's so new to the market. I can't tell you what it's going to look like in two years. I haven't had it for two years and it hasn't been on the market for two years. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have them. The biggest takeaway that I've found is longevity versus ease of use. What do I mean? The pit boss is easy to maintain. You don't have to season or reseason. Sometimes you got to do a deep clean. Um, let's say you don't use your flat top, your rolled steel flat top grill for six months. I've re-seasoned my brother's, my brother-in-law's flat top grill. Six months later, we opened the griddle that had never been opened since the day I used it. It was rusted and molded, right? With this, you don't have to worry about it. So there's a point and place for everything. For the average outdoor griddler out there, if you're only using it one or two times a week, this might be perfect for you. You don't have to worry about all the, the two covers. You know, you put the lid on it with a soft cover. You don't have to worry about storing it outside in the winter and stuff like that. These things you do, but if you use them often, it's like a well-machined um, well, car or boat. Well-oiled. Machine, thank you. The more you use it, the more seasoned it gets, the better off it's going to be. We've talked about it before. Each griddle that I have has prepared fantastic meals. I haven't had the Blackstone long, but we made, what, the Mexican cheesesteak on it, and then we made the, uh, the uh, redneck tacos. I've had this from day one. You guys know the meals I've made on it. The Pit Boss has done nothing but outperform. People said you couldn't get a crust on a smash burger, check. People said you can't make crispy hash browns, check. People said that you can't get a crust on a steak, check. We made pancakes on it. This has done everything. So the idea that one griddle is better than the other, I think is irrelative. There's, there's all kinds of goods and bads, pros and cons, it's what you decide. If you're asking me right now to put my foot to the fire, which griddle would I buy? I can't tell you that. Ooh. But I would like to build one with you. You guys ready? Let's start from the top. Let's start from the ground. If I was doing like a Nintendo game and we're trying to create like the ultimate player, right? The ultimate griddle. I love the idea that the Blackstone has four 360 degree wheels. Two, I like the idea of the double shelf. To be honest with you, I'm not sold on the air fryer 
because I just don't feel like I use as much as I thought I would. That's like one of those price things. Would you rather spend the two, three, four hundred dollars more for a gadget than you would just getting a flat top? That's something you guys have to determine. But I do like the idea of the double shelf. This shelf here is perfect for me, right? Three, <clears throat> if you held my foot to the fire, I would sickle roll still. I don't mind the maintenance. I don't mind um, what it takes to keep it in shape. I don't mind keep it on low so we don't uh, worry about warping. But none of these are portable. You can buy a portable version, but the pit boss lifts up and you can take it with you and just keep the stand here. It's super easy, it's convenient, and I like the dang thing. A matter of fact, in about what, a month from now, we're gonna be going on a, a huge family reunion and I'm taking the griddle with this base, this one, because it's portable. They told me to bring a griddle. I'm not packing this up in an SUV. There's no way. This thing's going with me, right? I would get one with a hood. The Camp Chef does not come with a hood. You either have to buy an aftermarket hood or an aftermarket, like I did, I bought the Blackstone grill cover to keep it protected. That's something that doesn't come with it. So I would want the hood on there. So like, this is a hood right here. Why? Because it creates that 360 um, uh, heat that we talk about, that convection, right? So if you're asking me which griddle do I, would I pick, it's so hard because I like individual things about each and I don't like things about each. All right, guys, there you go. I know it's a long video. It's pros versus cons. I try to tell you what I like about each griddle, what I don't like about each griddle, and ultimately, if I could build the ultimate griddle, that's how I'd build it. Thanks for staying through this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace.